today on the Self Smarter Podcast. I don't necessarily identify things as, as failure. Sure. I mean, because I think if you, it's how you react to it. Mm-hmm. What did, you know, and I have, obviously I have probably failed its magnitude of things, but it's how you react to them. Did you grow from them? And I think out of each failure that I can identify, I at least got better from them. Hi, we're Danelle and Megan, the hosts of this conversation-centric podcast for leaders seeking to be better every day. Whether you choose to be a leader in the workplace, at home, or in your community, we believe the most effective leaders are equipped to not only be self-starters, but self-smarter. Hello, and welcome to the Self-Smarter Podcast. I'm Danelle, and my friend and co-host, Megan, left me in charge today for an amazing conversation with an incredible guest. I am thrilled to welcome Michelle Weavers to the podcast today. Michelle is partner and chief revenue officer for Nexus Therapy Management. Michelle is also a longtime friend that I've known for five weeks. We'll talk more about that in a minute. (laughs) Michelle, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited and great to see you again. (laughs) For the second Second time time ever. (laughs) Again, we'll we'll dive into our lengthy uh, connection that we, we've had for five weeks. But Michelle, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So like you said, I am a managing partner of Nexus Therapy Management. It is what we do is provide uh, physical, occupational, and speech therapy in the long-term care uh, industry. So a lot of skilled nursing facilities, um, home health, um, that arena. So I am also a mother of four, Yes, uh, married 25 years. I think we're diving some into that journey as well. Yes, we will. Yes. So and you live in Arkansas. I do. I live in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which um, go hogs, but it's about <laughs> uh, 45 minutes south of Fayetteville, so where the university okay. is. Yeah. yeah. They didn't realize it was that close. Yes. All right. So Michelle and I have an interesting how we met story. So about five <laughs> weeks ago, I was leaving Nashville for New York. So I was literally on my way to my New York residency. And we were on a flight together, and Michelle was headed to New York from a business meeting in Nashville and headed to have some fun at a music festival. Yes. And I was was kind of deep in thought. You were. I was sitting by myself. I was on a single row. She was sitting across the aisle, and I was kind of in deep thought. So if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I... Taking the taking the leap and and deciding to go spend some a lengthy amount of time in New York was a big deal, and I had just spoken at a conference. And again, through the transition of of the business, it was a it was a bit of an emotional ride. And so I I was to myself. I was in my music, as you all probably can can imagine. And I don't know something just something I don't know what it was but I looked over and I just said hey I like your ring (laughs) I mean it was an interesting ring no doubt but at the same time it was like I had thought in myself I was just going to be melancholy kind of reflective and really try to to soak in the moment and I think the funny the (laughs) funny part about that was I don't wear a lot of jewelry at all. I had to look down and be like, what ring is she talking about? And I mean, just some cheap random ring, but okay. Yeah. And so then we just, I don't know, we just, we both had a connection. And I think what was happening is that our energy, I was in a reflective mode and as, as were you. So right. you can talk a little bit about that. I think I was trying to get out of work mode, had just come out of a meeting in Nashville and you know, I was heading to a concert in Connecticut. So it was going to be, was that on a Friday? I think so. Thir- yeah, yeah, it was a Friday. Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, trying to get out of that work mode. And, but I had just come from a meeting that um, <laughs> kind of put me in a mood. Um, not a bad mood, but it was a uh, self-awareness moment yes, yes. I was having. And I'm an eight, so I don't necessarily an eight on the Enneagram eight on the Enneagram and you know so reflecting from that meeting I was trying not to um what do you say be offended be angry and 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 just some background the meeting was with my two partners in Nexus Therapy Management and they are amazing Mm -hmm. amazing and we all have our skill sets and they are very different from mine we definitely have Mm -hmm. different personalities but um yeah I never want to be perceived as 
as something that I, I didn't understand how I was being in that meeting. So yes. I don't know if you want me to elaborate on that. Yeah, for sure. Because what I love about our conversation is we we were just, what are you doing? I was like, I'm leaving a conference. I'm headed to New York. And you were like, oh, you're moving there? I was yeah, like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I was moving there. And I talked a little bit about the journey I've been on. And that kind of led us to this conversation. I was like, what about you? You mentioned the, you didn't mention the meeting right off the bat, but we ended up just having this, this easy conversation. And we realized we're both two business women kind of going through this right. journey, mothers. We had, we had this instant connection around commonalities. Right. And right. so I think we found ourselves just in an easy, easy way of discussing. And, and that, of course, it was either going to lead us to music, it was going to lead us to the Enneagram or and Brene Brown. And we got Brown. into all of it, all <laughs> the above. <laughs> you guys, I was recently at a cocktail hour when the subject of websites came up. And do you know what someone asked me? They asked me if websites even matter. I'm here to tell you the short answer is a yes. And here's the great news. Nowadays, you can get a fully custom website from DMA around ten dollars to $12,000. That's right. We've unlocked the ingredient to getting businesses the custom style and functionality that they need for a very reasonable investment. Email us at info at dma-solutions.com and we'll get your website moving forward for 2023. Wait, we, I think that, <laughs> that I don't even know what the flight time was, but it, we got into everything. So, But my eyes did light up when she knew her Enneagram number and because she was telling me about the meeting that she had just left and she was, oh, a, you know, here's what we do and here's, and I, and I mentioned something and somehow As I led to... you were to... not analyzing me from the moment <laughs> I started talking. Oh, she's an eight. She's definitely an eight. <laughs> like after listening to, you know, more of your podcast, I'm like, she totally knew that without me saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when she knew that she was an eight, we, we immediately started to go down the Enneagram path. And it was just a, it was a great discussion. And we were able to find that you know, you can not know someone and still be on these very, very similar journeys. Right. And, you know, part of the journey that I'm on, and certainly with this podcast and me personally, is looking to connect with people that have a shared desire for self-awareness and, quite frankly, to be self-smarter. And so I instantly could pick up that that was your path and that's the path that you were on. And I was just fascinated by what you did. And I thought it was I don't know if it was irony or what, but the fact that I'm in therapy and I'm talking a lot about it, mm -hmm. and then you literally provide that service. Right, <laughs> so. right. And and two, I think coming from, like you said, I was in a reflective state. Mood, yeah. state mm -hmm. um, and then I'm way early on on my self-smarter journey, mm -hmm. but it was still, okay, really reflecting. And I think years previous, I wouldn't have been in that reflective mode coming from a meeting. And I think, too, just the background of that meeting was a new venture that we're doing. Right. So I'm extremely excited. So I know that my intensity can be, you know, um, perceived as maybe too intense, I've been called, or aggressive, ag too aggressive, yeah, or, I yeah. I, I, you know, some of the negative things where I never wanted to come across that way, because I'm mm. super excited about this new business venture that we're doing and, you know, just coming from that meeting and thinking, hmm, you know, <laughs> I thought I brought a lot to that meeting. <laughs> yes. Maybe not. <laughs> well, what's interesting, too, is that we made a connection and I, I mentioned that we had this podcast and I said, you know, you give it a listen. And I think I sent you a you link did. and said, and I didn't think, I didn't know if she was going to listen to the podcast, but I thought, man, some of the things that we just talked about on that flight, I welcomed her and said, we're we're on this journey right. still. We've been on it for a while. Give the podcast a listen. And, and uh, Michelle ended up, I mean, you can tell us about it, but you ended up listening to the podcast and, and finding some validation. I did. And, you know, I think, and I, I mentioned this to you in our second visit like <laughs> 10 minutes ago, um, that, you know, I did. It kind of gave me validation listening. And I've, I've listened, I think, to the majority of them. But at, at each episode, I found myself thinking, okay, like I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the right path. I'm on the right track of trying to be self smarter. Yeah. Um, some of the, the, the books you've mentioned or just some of the phrases that you've said has, have really resonated with me mm -hmm. on this self-awareness journey um, and, and allowed me to go deeper with it. Um, yeah. And I think too, you know, you gave us that feedback early on and Megan and I, that's why we started this. Right. It's not necessarily to, you know, teach. I mean, teaching is part of it because we want to share. It's more about sharing and then be able to 
put it all out there so that someone can feel less, I don't know, again, we, we use the word alone a lot, but sometimes it can just feel that right. way, but seen. And, and yeah, you, you're an eight on the Enneagram, for instance. We know, we know the, the amazing parts of that, but we also know what, what the struggle is. And I know it personally because I have a, a very prominent eight wing, but we, you know, we have people in, in our organization and in our personal lives that are eight. So it's by putting what we're putting out there on the podcast, it's just great to know that people that we know are benefiting from it, but then people that we meet right. immediately are benefiting from it. And you've been so generous with your feedback. And I love some of the feedback. She'll random, Michelle randomly text me and be like, I listened to this episode and I disagree with one of the things you said. Like that, <laughs> I love that. Cause we get a lot There's of applause. <laughs> yes. We get a lot of applause and you mean it sincerely. Like right. I disagree with that. I see it this way. And I go, I, I would think that you would see it that right, way. So right. that that has meant a lot too, is that not only have you praised us for the work that we're doing on the podcast, but you've also given some great thoughts of things that we hadn't thought about or your perspective. And that's what, Rich, and that's why you're sitting across from me now. So. Well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you know, I'm listening to two brilliant-minded businesswomen, and I can only aspire, you know, <laughs> I try every day, you know, on my path and, and not just in the professional, but in a personal. And, you know, you guys have really, by listening, um, you, you really do inspire people to dig deeper into being self-smarter. And so obviously kudos to that. Thank um, you. Yeah, I think that it is touching people. And your vulnerability is, I mean, <laughs> and humility. I mean, obviously that, I'm learning that, but. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, the, they go hand in hand. They do. And you know, we're, we're trying to put that out there so that more people can be, again, aware a little bit sooner than what we were, you know, and, and, right. and I think too, but being uh, yeah. women in business, mm -hmm. we already have that wall up, that guard up that where you, you, you know, you don't make mistakes and it, you know, it's just it's cutthroat in, in a way. So are we allowed to make a mistake as, you know, it's, I mean, we have, are we allowed to make mistakes as being C CEOs of a company or hardcore businesswomen or, mm -hmm. you know, to allow that vulnerability that you guys have portrayed through the podcast is has really resonated. Well, good. Well, thanks. So speaking of that, mm. you, let's dive into a little bit more about you. So I'd like to start because I, I love this part of your, well, there's multiple aspects of your story that I love, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just still in awe, you know, the scholar athlete. So that's, that's oh, kind of athlete. your, let's start there. <laughs> let's talk about your bad, na bad assness. Listen, <laughs> when we're going to say athlete loosely. Um, no, I, I don't know. No one really told me that I was short and not that fast. Um, probably somebody should have early on in my life, but no. So I took the path of, I mean, I played softball for many years and then I decided to just play basketball mm -hmm. and, um, very, just had some really good coaches along the way, uh, great team players and somehow ended up playing at the college level. It was junior college, but nonetheless, um, you have to put in 110% when you're mm -hmm. on the court. And, and I, you know, I say this to any athlete that, you know, ever maybe listening or even young person that if, man, I mean, you, it doesn't matter. Like you still have to put 110%. In Meaning it doesn't matter that you're born with talent or you're born with a certain no, size. Right. You played basketball and you're five. Well, I mean, I have heels on. Like, <laughs> you'll never see me without heels on. So do I have to tell the okay, truth? Okay, no, you don't. No, you don't. Okay, okay. But, no, but, I'm kidding. I'm 5'2". Five 5'2". Two. Five two. Okay. okay, so 5'2". But she's, she's being a very humble at this moment. But I, wanna, I want our listeners to understand, like, you, you told me the story that you didn't you played on a select team. Mm-hmm. Seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, and you went sixty-four and zero. Sixty-four and zero. There's, I and, mean, you know, that's impressive on in select. Yeah, yeah. In our in our town, um, you know, it's a I, Fort Smith is what ninety-five thousand people, but I mean, we have, you know, you have your junior highs. Um, I went uh, to a, a private Catholic junior high and had some phenomenal athletes, and we had played AAU ball, which is, I guess, what you're referring to as like mm -hmm. select. I don't know. I, anyway. I've only heard of it as okay. like not outside of the school. Like right, right outside where, school. Yes, where the serious kids go to play. Right, right. And yeah. so I mean, back then it wasn't near as serious as it is today. But uh, we we had a, a a team that won nationals, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 
that it was good for me. And then, yes, we went 64 and 0. And then, you know, and went to where there's only two major high schools uh, where I'm from. And so playing basketball there, yes, um, being successful there to, and having, again, had some amazing coaches and, and was allowed the opportunity to play at a college level. And, and for me, uh, I always didn't put all my eggs in that basket, obviously. Um, academics were key. Key. Were key. So yeah. um, that was my driving force. But if basketball was going to allow me to pursue my dreams academically, yeah, um, I'll continue to play at whatever la- uh, level they'll allow me to. So playing junior college was amazing. I had aspirations and so you wanted to you you, academics were a big deal because you wanted to be a doctor I did I um, was pre-med and I mean I was determined and that's what I was going to do I mean I and I felt that calling not that I knew what that was but I just felt it wasn't like oh I'm going to be a doctor because I want to make money I wanted to be a doctor and it was more so I wanted that knowledge I wanted that Mm -hmm. knowledge that comes along with being a doctor Um, that and maybe that's not what I should have thought. Maybe it should have been patient care, but I wanted the knowledge to be able mm-hmm. to, you know, serve no, people. No, I, I think that that's valid, especially high schooler. I mean, to yes. have that thought. I mean, that's that so. So yeah. Special. So things were going right on. Right on. They, right, right on, on track. Right on track, which but, they should. I mean, that's how I had it lined out in my head. So not surprised with it. So drive, drive. was something you had in spades. I'm, I'm hearing like you're, yeah. you're a successful basketball player with a few odds. Yes. You know, if you're thinking of who you played against, I'm, right. sh- I'm assuming there were some height disadvantages too. <laughs> height, everything, quickness. <laughs> quickness. So uh, where I was from, so that was a great junior college program. And back, I say back then, what is that, 20 something years ago? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we don't have to disclose that. We don't that. have to disclose that. <laughs> um, you know, back then it was more like junior college was maybe a stopping point, uh, not stopping point, a, a pathway to sure. get to D1. If you if you didn't have the grades um, for these stellar athletes, they would maybe sometimes go to junior college sure. and then work on the grades to be admitted into the bigger colleges. Um, so that was kind of the case with the college that was in my town. And um, so it wasn't the case that I – it I needed to stay there for affordability. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can appreciate that. Right, right. Um, and so I didn't – I had gotten partial offers to go play other places, but it just wasn't worth the money at the time. And um, I thought, okay, this is my stepping stone and this is what I'll do. Clearly, to play the sport of basketball, there's just there's there's some attributes to successful next level basketball players that you and I'm not being derogatory here, but you don't you don't you didn't possess. You you're, said it. You're stating the obvious. <laughs> definitely stating the obvious. Well I that's the part of the story that I think our listeners, you know, would would benefit from hearing is because you you found the drive. And this was not something your family pushed you towards that I mean they supported you, but this was your this was your path and you had to work harder, it seems, because of the level that you were playing at. Right. And I I did. And, and I worked extremely hard. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I was going to be the first one in the gym, the last one to leave. Right. And I think that, I mean, there's a lot of ways that carries on later on in life that mm-hmm. I guess we will get to. We will. Um, you know, but again, that drive was there. I was I was determined. I was on a mission. And it playing basketball, I mean, that was just a, at that level, Mm-hmm. I was like, this is just a stepping stone to where I need to get to. Sure. And financially, you made the decision, like, I, you you were offered partial scholarships, mm-hmm. but you decided because there's a great junior college and you happen to be in your area with an incredible program, right. that you decided to go there and play ball. Right. And go pre-med. Uh, yes. I mean, it didn't exactly go like that, but yes. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Actually, I was not recruited to play. And I uh, love that part of the story, it, too. I was not, I was not <laughs> recruited to play. They had the number one uh, junior point guard in the country coming to this college, again, as a stepping stone for her to go D1. Okay. Um, and it was a remarkable uh, remarkable program. Great coach. Um, God rest his soul. <laughs> and, um, yeah, a phenomenal man. But he called me in his office after the first week of school, and obviously I've already um, loaded my schedule with 18 hours of honor classes, Um never made a B in my life. So, you know, obviously I'm on fast track to get out of there to get to the next point, which is med school. Sure. Well, another 
couple of years and then med school. Um, so he called me in his office and he said, I need you to be back up to number one point guard in the country coming. And I said, he said, I know that you could tell me a few words and walk out of this office for not recruiting you, but mm -hmm. I really need you. And I said, well, I've never not started a day in my life. I'll earn a starting position by the time season starts. Mind you, this is August. Uh, season started November 3rd. <laughs> so <laughs> I love um, that you remember the day. I do. I do remember. Um, I mean, I was, it, it was a humbling moment, but it, there was a little bitterness. I mean, of course, he didn't recruit me and you want me to come <laughs> And you're play. a local girl, a local I'm, star. Yeah, I, I, am, I know you don't like, girl. yeah, no, I mean, and, um, so he knew who I was and, you know, so, but again, an opportunity. So yeah. and I think, um, that's a resounding theme in my journey is seizing opportunity sure. when you need it. And you're very self smarter in that moment to <laughs> sit with your humility and, and say, okay, yeah. let's do this. And two, I had something to prove. Sure. I wanted to, I wanted to prove I can I can play with these girls and I'll earn a starting position. And I did. I think I might be the smallest power forward in that program in the history. I was a three guard because obviously she was point guard and phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And these girls could play and I'm in all of the successes they've had. So you're you've earned a starting position mm -hmm. and you are you're carrying an 18 hour load pre-med mm -hmm. and life 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 gave you a different well, a I turn mean, the, my first year was mm. successful very okay. successful um getting recruited to go on um at the next level so you know that second year of junior college basketball would have is important so we're coming up on that season okay um had a plan you know i'm thinking these you know i had some some looks at the end of last season and i thought okay if this is going to continue my plan mm -hmm. to become a doctor and schooling paid for. I don't know that I can earn a starting position at D1, but by God, if they're going to pay for some <laughs> education, I'm going. Um, so that was the plan and everything was going according to plan. Um, but as we all know, at some point, our plans don't always work. So right. God had a different one for me. Okay. And I became a mother. Yay. So at 19. Okay. 19. So yes. um, obviously that wasn't in the cards, but... I mean, but in so many ways it was, but in so many ways it was. So when I met Michelle, it was one of the things that stood out. Obviously we had this connection around self-awareness and kind of what we were experiencing just in that moment on that airplane ride. But immediately when she started talking about her family and her kids, I just, I, I was in awe and I'm a very proud mom as everyone who listens to this podcast knows, but please tell us more about your amazing family. Right. So, my, and then we'll circle back to yeah, your, yeah, yeah. Because I just I, I love this part. So you know, my husband and I, early age, um, we have our first daughter, and mm -hmm. um, it, she was amazing. And after I, I have to preface this with um, never, never did I ever think about kids and family. It was med school doctor. Right. So now I'm thrown in this role as wife mother. Mm -hmm. And it was new to me. I, I didn't babysit in my life. And here now I have a baby. And I, I thought we were going to stop at one, but I guess we don't stop at one. Um, <laughs> that's just not in the cards, right? So tell us a little bit more about your kids. Like, So yeah, I have uh, four beautiful children. Mm -hmm. Beautiful um, children. Yeah, beautiful children. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and successful already in their own right. So I you're, mean, you're, you're, to give us the, the ages. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my oldest is 24, and I'm very, very proud of her. She's her last school of, at uh, in law school, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah. So she, like her mother, had a plan and <laughs> <laughs> a very ambitious plan, yeah. and she has executed it to the T to this day. And so Taylor graduates in May. She graduates in May and has already signed with a, a very reputable firm. Wow, law yeah. firm, law That's firm. Incredible. Yes, yes, um, and then my. Next one, Mary Kate is mm -hmm. 20. She's an undergrad. Pre-med, maybe just recently changed that to pre-vet. Um, I told her she Ooh, needs to. Ooh, you know to, where the best vet school to go to is, you know, know. Texas A&M. Is it though? <laughs> now, I mean, no, in my kidding. opinion. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Very, very good program, and I would love to see her there. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and she just, she's trying to figure out which path, you know, if it was going to, I mean, that's a big deal, and I'm trying not to have any But she's bias. in college now. Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and very very successful, um, and no doubt whichever direction she goes, um, she's going to be a phenomenal vet or doctor or mm -hmm. whatever she chooses. Yeah. Um, very ambitious as well and goal-oriented. Goal so 
Now, then you get to the boys that are 17 and 13. Okay. Um, I, oof, what do they do? Um, so the 17 year What do they not do? What are they? Well, not what do they not do. They're all boy. Um, I'm, I really thought my only goal when I had boys was just keep them alive. I mean, <laughs> they are all boy. But no, they, you know, I've got a senior. So we're looking to see what he's going to be interested in and looking at aviation. Oh, wow. So, um, and which would be a great field right now. Absolutely. So, yeah. And then the 13 year old, he's just living life. <laughs> he, he, if, and he lives his best life every day. So. That's great. They're, they're a very outdoorsy family. So that's yes. also important to note. So one of the themes that, that really resonates with our listeners is, is being a working mom. And you've, when you, when you realize that your life was headed in a little bit different direction than what you had planned for yourself, you leaned into your role as wife and mother, and then you also you decided, I don't have to leave the, the field where I can medically help people. So what did you decide to do? Right. And so, I mean, starting off so young, so I was thinking, all right, med school just is it could have been done, mm -hmm. yes, and my husband was completely supportive of that. Mm -hmm. But I felt in my heart I needed to be mom first. So what's something I could be, you know, financially beneficial to the family, but something quick, quicker. And so I went to PTA school because okay. there was a program closer. Okay. Um, so physical therapy assistant, for those that don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, so it did put me in the healthcare industry. Sure. And it's treating patients and um, – I'm very blessed with that decision. Decision, yes. I mean, it, it did. It, it, I, but I say this um, early on in the in the years. My husband would probably be objecting, going, "She was not happy with this. <laughs> she was not happy. She was resentful for a minute." And but I, you know, you have to. I did. I pivoted, you know, and tried to really figure out that role of wife, mother, mm -hmm. and I struggled with that. Sure. And it wasn't until. Then I found a career once I graduated and, and then started working. And then I just, not a healthy balance, I would say. Sure. Um, but again, I listened to your podcast of that <laughs> that work-life balance. And I have to agree, it's a little bit... Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> um, but I think, I mean, I looking back, probably unhealthily dove more into the career because that mom identity... Mm -hmm. It, it, looking, you had to set into it. It right, took a minute. It took a minute. And then trying to trying to look, and I know you're not supposed to compare, but I'm looking at all these other moms and they're, you know, they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing and fitting into that mold perfectly. Prescription, sure. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I never did. And I still don't. <laughs> and my kids will tell you that, sure. no, mom's not like the other moms. Yeah. And that's okay. Um, it's funny because um, <laughs> we share that in common. I remember the first time my Mackie said that to me, I was, I, I was taken back. I was like, and she's like, "Mom, no, I like you just the way that you are. Like, it's okay that the other moms show up at the school all the time and do all the things." I and don't she's know like, that my kids still are okay with the fact that I wasn't. I don't know. They're just like, "Mom's mom. I, we don't know what she's doing next." Well, I like that, and I appreciate the the vulnerability, and I know our listeners will too, of, of you sharing, you know, your whole story and kind of where you, how you got here today. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about, we've, we've clearly stated that the balance is, it was a struggle early on. Do you find that you've found a way now to, uh, I mean, you clearly have an understanding that it, you can't be all the things all the time. So oh, yeah. you've had to work on almost that grace for yourself is what I'm hearing right. because you have, you have, we have to battle in this, in this role. And then, you know what? I don't want to make this just about working moms. You just happen to be a working mom, right, but the dads right. listening in or those that are planning on being dads, the balance piece of it really is a mindset. It's a, it, we have to put ourselves into a mindset that says, okay, we cannot be all great at all the things all the time. But if we say, you know, this week is going to present itself as an opportunity for me to really lean in as a mom, I'm going to be at home for the week or whatever it may be. Or, you know, if the next week requires travel, then it, you know, you, you compensate for those things. And I think giving ourselves the grace to show up in the best way possible that we can and being able to communicate with the, that with others in our lives and say, here's, here's what it looks like for mom this week, right. or here's what it looks like team for me this week. I'm going to be on the road or, or, or not, whatever it may be. And I think I'm interested to know where, where are you in this, 
this stage of your your balancing? I wish that I wish I would have had this podcast <laughs> early on to 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 know that I was allowed some grace. Okay. Um, you know, I had four kids before I was thirty. Okay. So, and then at the same time, as soon as I graduated, I started a, a, a co- at a company that was in its uh, infancy. Inf- yeah, yeah, infancy, mm-hmm. and so to to play that role of jumping into that company and at the same time growing that company and growing my family, family yes. <laughs> at the same time. So that balance really hit me and I didn't allow myself a lot of grace. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, to anyone listening, allow yourself that grace. And I was so, I was young mm-hmm. and I, you know, I just kind of felt like I have to do this. I have to do this. And this is what's expected of me. And failure isn't an option anymore because you have to understand I already felt like I failed in a sense sure. from that first path I thought I was on. Right, because it changed. Right, because it changed. And, and now I can look back and say, it was just a pivot. Yes. It was just a pivot. It's okay. <laughs> yes. Well, now so you have all these blessings. Yeah. I do. I, and now I have all these blessings. And, you know, there was a lot of pivotal moments in that. I worked for the same company for 17 years. And, yes, I went in as a, a physical therapist assistant treating patients. Mm-hmm. But it quickly evolved to... Uh, a management role Mm -hmm. and not having any management uh, of any sort experience and Mm -hmm. or even mentors I should say Mm -hmm. you know to to look up to to say how do you manage people and you know looking back I think that's one of my biggest regrets is not having the tools Mm -hmm. but you don't know what you don't know yeah and I, I regret is it's like one of those things of what what would I have given to have what we have today and and that has been a theme on this podcast because it's the case for Meg and I. We think back, like, what if yeah, we would yeah. have had the Enneagram in our 20s? And that's wow. why it, what it, it could have, it wouldn't have, listen, all the stuff that we talk about on here and all the tools that are available to us today, they're not going to keep us from mi- a misstep. Oh, no. And, because that means we never have lessons. But what, what we do have access to today, it, it can prepare us more for really how we show up, like how we're wired. And so as life presents itself to us, the highs and the others, right? I don't like to think of them as lows because they're just lessons, is that we we can be a little bit more emotionally prepared to accept what comes our way. Right. The things we can control and the things that yeah, the things that we can't. So I want to I want to I want to explore a little bit more about your leadership journey. So you said you worked for the same company for 17 years. It was a startup essentially when you started in, in, mm-hmm. in many ways. Yes. And then you you were key to the growth of that organization mm-hmm. on was that on the sales side and the operations or both? Both. 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 Very, so you were, very very much so both. You had your hands in a lot of different areas. I did and okay. I'm so grateful for that. I you know looking back I am maybe when I was in the trenches I I wasn't as grateful, but I am great. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but I am grateful that I had the opportunity to, to be on operations side and 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 really drive those and our and our numbers and our data, you sure. know, and re- reaching our goals and our ben- benchmarks. But somehow I ended up in more of a salesperson role as well, alongside mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. which a lot of times in, in bigger companies, I know. That they keep operations yeah, and sales. Yeah, yes. they're in their silos. Mm-hmm. And, and here I am wearing both hats, which I am very grateful for now that I see how, you know, not that, and I can see why they should be in different silos and maybe, but they should still communicate, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, instrumental and, and, and realized that that was another pivot. Okay. That was another pivot to, to know I had a different skill set, um, sure. able to go and make connections Mm-hmm. and create relationships to grow a business. Okay. So I love that. You and I uh, share something in common is that maybe we didn't have the tools, but what we what we consciously or unconsciously chose to do is work in multiple areas of the business, which taught us, you know, we were w- more well-rounded. Right. And now, and then, I don't, the case for me was the 26% approval rating when I realized that your skill set around being able to do the work, Danelle, there's nothing else left to prove. You know how to run a successful business, all the Mm -hmm. external metrics, you know how to do the marketing work, and now you know how to teach others how to do the marketing work and and support them in their growth and learn from them. But wowzers, you had, you know, the, 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 the reality of, but you're, 
you're not where you need to be if you want to be the type of leader that makes people better. Right. And that was a, an awakening. And what makes me laugh is when you brought, brought that up, your approval rating of 26%, and that's kind of like spearheaded this, this podcast and everything and the self-awareness journey. I don't even know if I would have gotten that high of a rating. <laughs> I mean, I and I, I laugh about it now, but I still feel some guilt there. Of course. I, I mean, I just feel like maybe if I would have had that self-awareness as I was in a management position and leadership role, and again, I mean, I was younger and I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, man, if I would have just had that those tools to be able to communicate better with teams. Sure. Maybe, you know, maybe we would have even been even more successful. Mm-hmm. But again, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's never too late to start it's, and it, no, right, never too right. late to start. And I think that's, again, that's the essence of what we're trying to do here. And that's certainly why I encouraged you early on in this connection we'd made to come on the podcast, because there's so much in your story that that is a different type of example of what Megan and I have, you know, experienced. But you're the type of guest that we want on here, because especially going forward, now that we're in our maturation process for our podcast and we know what people are interested in. You are an ideal candidate for being a guest. So again, thank you for coming on. No, thank you. So talk to us about some of the the challenges that you faced as a leader. And and obviously you can reflect and say, wow, I wish I would have done things or known things a little bit differently now. But what are some of the challenges that you had to overcome in leadership? You're in a male-dominated industry as well. Oh, I am. Okay. Um, And, you know, I'm not a man basher. I'm not at all. Oh, (laughs) gosh. I just want to preface it with that. I'm not. (laughs) But, you know, I am in a Mm male-dominated industry. And and I was, you know, when I got into more of the sales role, I was exposed a lot more. I was in meetings a lot more um, and, and, and dominated by men. So... There are challenges there, and, and I wish I had some more communication skills um, because I would get flustered, flustered, yeah, as, of a, course, a, a, aggressive. You know, I, I feel <laughs> well, like you, I get, had... you would get thrown <laughs> off your game, and then you would come back with aggression. Right, I know you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and if somebody, if I would have read, and I'm an eight, and I would know how why I'm feeling these this way, but. It, there were a lot of challenges. Um, sitting, it, it gets intimidating at times, sure. and I'm not one to be intimidated. I no. mean, I'm not. So, you know, working that um, in that industry, it, and I think it, it goes the same in, in every industry. Sure. And I think women do get, and it goes back to that me reflecting from that meeting, coming out with my partners, and I and I, I when they're listening to this, it, it is not a dig to you, I promise. <laughs> but I just thought, would they be thinking the same thing? If I were a man, because I, right. they were saying like some of the things they were saying were, were not mean, but in a, in a very light hearted manner, because we had, were meeting with another uh, person that we were putting into a, uh-huh. a very specific role and, and he was working on this new venture with us and I'm asking questions, right? And they are thinking at the end of the meeting, we're like, oh, I think that went well. And they're like, well, for a while I thought he was going to be under the table in a fetal position because <laughs> of the way you were coming at him. And I thought. I mean, that killed me because I thought... Because you were asking just thoughtful questions. I was asking questions. I mean, I was just according to timeline. Are we going to meet this deadline? Things that I I thought were... I mean, but I guess I was perceived as assertive. Sure. Or maybe too intense. Too intense. I I get called that all the time. And so... And and as, as... have I many, many times. And I know that the eights on our team that are listening to this, you know, they've had to... They've had to navigate that. And I think just being aware of it is is key and i think when you're in a a position like that and the other folks maybe around the table or in the room aren't necessarily aware of you know because i think and i know you adore your partners well no and i think they are they know because we've taken some personality tests not very deep um Mm -hmm. just within our executive team and they know i I'm I'm the intense one. I'm the driver. I'm the one that you know gets it done. Let's mm-hmm. I rally. You know sure. I'm going to be excited, and so they do know my personality. And so I'm and I, words matter. And words matter. So I'm thinking that that that's a leadership opportunity for you with with your partners is to they mean the best. But sometimes when we say our words, I mean we have had to learn this with our kids. It's sometimes just when you become aware of maybe that's not the you know I've, I was called bossy. Or nosy my entire life. Well, A, 
I am boss. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Right. But it felt bad. And I remember, and, and, and folks that listen to our podcast know that curiosity is one of my superpowers. But when I was little, I was curious, but it came out in the form of questions. So I would be, they were like, just my goodness, like wh- wh- you're so intense or so nosy or so. And I'm like, no, I'm just curious. Like I want to know why things are the way that they are. Well, when I heard you're, you're maybe too intense. In my mind, can that be? Can you be too intense? I mean, when, Not when you're trying for greatness, when it, you're trying for greatness, can you be too intense? So I'm thinking, wait, did they mean that negative? Like, why is that negative? No, uh, you know? I love it. And then again, I think it's these little nuances that get overlooked because you, if we hadn't had that conversation, right. you might have eventually just wrote that off and kind of set with that yourself. But right. having the opportunity to kind of talk through it and wait, like, and maybe in some way I validated the way you were feeling. It's like, oh, oh, I've gotten that all. I get that. I've gotten yeah, that so many times. Right. And but we have an opportunity now to, you know, work with the people around us. And I've been so blessed to have people in my life that give the other kind of feedback. I've again, I've gotten the glorious kind. But the other kind, I said, Danelle, you're coming on. A, a little too intense. I know that it's your fear. I know that it's your six wing, or I know that you're in stress right now. So you're going to one and D you're, you know, this would be something Meg would say to me out of, you know, respect and love is D you're you're being so nitpicky about something that really doesn't matter right now. Mm -hmm. What are you stressed about? Right. You know, and so it's, it's having people around you that can help you in those moments where of course you're winning, but in moments where you're, where you're struggling a little bit and you just don't have any idea. And most of the time it's coming from a really good place. You were coming from a really good place. And they know that. Yeah, of course they know that. And that we always joke about it because our personalities are so different. And that's why, you know, the founder, Greg Arnold, then put us together and he's like, you know, I always was always praying for that perfect person to put the puzzle pieces together Mm -hmm. because our personalities are completely different. And I don't know that he, you know, we joke about, he thinks he found the puzzle piece with me and life got crazy for him immediately <laughs> in the company. <laughs> I think he might have bit off a bit of more than he could chew, but you know, I'm very well, grateful for that. I, I just, I just, I think this is just an important part of it is that when, when people who are in business together and in these critical roles and you have, th- there's three of you, right. That are partners in, mm-hmm. in Nexus, Managing. right. I, and mm-hmm. we'll talk about, she has some other businesses as well, but I think it's critical that you can have, the type of dialogue that says, you know, where you're able to kind of talk through those things, yes. whether it's in the moment yes. or in a reflective state. And they state. are self-smarter. Don't yes. get me wrong. They and they recognize their strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. as well. And but it's a journey. It, it doesn't is stop. A, it is a journey. And yeah. you do have to sit with it for a minute. I mean, and, and, and I'm, I travel across the country and I have meetings with so many different personalities. And really, it it's really helped me in my journey just self-smarter to recognize, like you said, like someone's coming from a, from a a place of insecurity or from a place of fear, Fear. maybe Mm -hmm. they're not in their comfort zone with this conversation. What can I do to get them to engage? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's, that's smart. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I would say so myself. I think it is. (laughs) It is absolutely. So I wish I had had that early on. Of course. And so in leadership, one of the things I've picked up up, um, about you is that you are an avid reader. So what are some of the books or tools that have really been, which really shaped you as a leader in this part of your journey? I, I am an avid reader and I'm one of those that I'll I'll pick up a book and I'm going to read it. And I think, okay, this is self-help. I'm going to read this and I'm going to, I'm going to be perfect after this. And, and here's what I have to speak to people who do pick up books thinking that they're going to, it's going to be life changing. And some of them are, but I always like to pick out a few things. You always come about, come out away with key points. Mm -hmm. So when I recommend a book to a team or a friend, you know, I'm not saying this might be, you know, this may not be life life changing, but you're going to get something out of Mm -hmm. it. So I feel like I can get something out of any book I read. Um, You know, early on, um, one of the books that I had shared with the team was um, Culture Eat Strategy for Lunch, Mm -hmm. Um, just in that work environment and in the culture that we want to create in our executive team. Another one that I recommended was the 
power of positive thinking. Oh, Norman I mean, and, Vincent Pill. And that that's an, <laughs> you know, a classic. Yes, yes, yes. Considering <laughs> you know, I read it in high school, it's right. definitely a classic. <laughs> right, you know, but I still come back to that. I still come back because I think it's important. Um, and you can see my books. They're highlighted. They've got <laughs> sticky notes sticking out of them. We and, share that in common. And I love to go back and, and look to see why I highlighted that. And then you sometimes have an even more en- enlightened experience with whatever that point right. was. I and you know, that. and I think the, the power of positive thinking, something I got out of that was I changed my outlook on how I looked at failure. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, and if I know that you might have asked me this, like, what do you consider your biggest failure? And I wasn't mocking that like, a little bit. I <laughs> a little bit. A little, little, little bit. I mean, I even think she lowered her voice. No, I, I, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Um, no, I, I just, I don't necessarily identify things as, as failure. Sure. I mean, because I think if you, it's how you react to it. Mm-hmm. What did you know? And I have obviously I have probably failed its magnitude of things, but it's how you react to them. Did you grow from them? And I think out of each failure that I can identify, I at least got better from them. Sure. So I don't. I can't con- look back and consider it a failure. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm just in the clouds well, with it. But it's a power of positive thinking. It is. It's taking a, a positive situation, a positive spin to things, mm-hmm. and that sounds so cliche. No. But absolutely, and it's something that I've had to be reminded about. And again, I, I read that book a long time ago, and I think the I, I think he's a great. Um, and I think um, any mind. Malcolm Gladwell book. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to the books. Mm-hmm. Um, Blink. Blink. Um, okay. I, I did. Um, I liked, uh, and a lot of those helped me just identify different personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, when I moved more into the, a sales role, mm-hmm. which is basically, you know, CRO of Nexus, my my job is to grow the business. Right. So my day to day is just talking to people, meeting <laughs> people, creating that relationship. Sure. So yeah, heavy relationship business. Like uh, a pivot was shared. actually another one. Um, okay. I think it was a uh, what's her Jenny Black. I think is the author. Oh, oh, the book pivot. pivot. Mm-hmm. Okay, book I haven't pivot. read that. Yeah, um, and it really kind of dives deep on the different moments in life where you do pivot. Mm-hmm. You know, and don't get stuck in that rut. Yes, you pivot. So, okay. and I can along the journey. Man, am I pivoting? I feel like sometimes that's all I do pivot to where I'm just going in a circle because I have pivoted the same direction. <laughs> yes, and believe me. <laughs> yeah, I know how that feels. And one of the things that I, I, I again, I, I just, I, I love your candor, Michelle. Is that she was listening to some of our podcasts, and I get a text. It's like I, I can't do this Atlas of the Heart book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. Uh, and then what's hilarious is that we have two very, um, very amazing eights on our team, and I feel like they, 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 we all read the book as a company. Well, y'all, you, you, <laughs> oh my gosh! So you and Meg are all about this book on this podcast, and I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, like, how, why, and and, and not the, all it, the emotions, all the emotions. <laughs> and so I get it back out. I get, I, I, and it was the audio book, which you did say get get the the, the, hard, the hard copy the yeah. hard copy yeah. and what was funny in that conversation when i texted you and said i'm str- i struggle with atlas of the heart like the leaning into emotions is not my thing <laughs> and it is not my thing and i think i did it for survival of course i mean of we course. i don't have time for emotions mm-hmm. i don't have time no you know and my husband will attest to this just quick bypass there yeah, sure we did the whole retreat early on in our marriage of the five love languages oh wow okay and i might have mentioned this to you but we did this and we were complete opposite well we we perceived it that way um his number one is physical touch okay. that was my lowest by far <laughs> uh, by far yeah. um mine was acts of service okay so you know and but identifying that helped us to a point sure for me i thought Ugh, he's sensitive. Like, I can't deal with this and all these emotions. <laughs> he's Why? a nine on the Enneagram. Oh, yes, he's a nine. Yes. Um, and so I'm thinking, just quit being so sensitive. Let's move on. <laughs> and what I love about that story, just real quick, is that I know Mackenzie's listening to this right now, and everyone has listened to Mackenzie, and, and we've referred to her a lot. She's definitely an eight, but she's married to a nine as well. And she's a she's a, a mom to be. So we both Hannah and Mackenzie on our team are eights, and they're they're both pregnant. And married babies are babies. Uh, well, Hannah's married to okay. an eight as well, and or she, he's an eight, so is she. And then, but Matt, Mackenzie's husband Turner is a nine, and I I love I can hear this dynamic, and I can hear 
when you speak, I hear McKinsey a lot, and I, I know they're really going to appreciate throw, this. Wait till she throws that baby in the mix. She needs to get my number. I can give her she does. Tests. No, that's, not, that's what I was going to say is that <laughs> I can't wait for them to listen to this podcast because I think they're going to take a lot from you and as as young moms to be and eights on the Enneagram. And, so you know, and you, and you say that. Our kids are, are different. My oldest, eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Now, <laughs> my boys... We don't know yet, course, but, but they're, they're a little more sensitive mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with it. They're precious and I love them and I go full mama bear. But, yes. <laughs> but I, it's interesting because how are my, my girl, I think Mary Kate's a seven okay. and Taylor's an eight, but then my boys, man, they're just going to be, they're probably a nine. They're probably, they have some more of that emotional sensitive side, but as a mom, I love that. I love yes. that for them, but I not just, but my girls, if I would have seen that, I would have been like, we don't have time for that. <laughs> you, you've got to do this. And sure. You, gotta, you know, but it was that, I don't know why, but that's how I raised the girls. The, the rough and tough, like we don't. Right. And I mean, and I look at their, the, what they're achieving right now. So I think that's probably shaped a lot of it. And I, and I, I, I just told him to put back a lot of money for therapy later. I have no <laughs> idea what kind of damage I did to him. Amen. I mean, Maggie's just graduated from her first round. I'm sure she's headed right back into it at some point. I have no But idea. I think it's that's beautiful. That's a beautiful, like, realization and is that, yeah, as parents, you know, hopefully we did the best that we could with what, what we knew at the time. And in my opinion, in my reflection on, you know, even myself – I'm pretty proud of where things stand, and I know that you feel the right, same way I when do. you talk about your your girls and in and, and your sons. And I know they're younger. Just no, you didn't get everything right, but that's okay. Right. And I and think I do need to dive back into Atlas of the Heart and get more in touch with the emotions. <laughs> I know, and I and you've inspired me to do it. I am, okay. you know. But what leading back onto that conversation, mm -hmm. I had told you. I said. I feel like I'm struggling with this book as much as I did The Untethered Soul. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the fact that you read The Untethered Soul said a lot because that's a tough book. That is a tough book. To grasp. Yes, to grasp. Yeah. It, it goes so deep. Deep, yeah. Which is obviously not where I go. Um, <laughs> but I had to sit with that a lot. Yes. So you were you were like, wow, well, that's how you need to come approach Atlas of the Heart. So, yeah, you've got to take it in doses. In fact, that's how we ended up. It took me two years to finish The Untethered Soul. <laughs> Two years. Well, it might take you a little bit longer on, <laughs> especially if you're taking it in small doses. But w that's how we uh, took it on as as a company, as a book read, is we just did one or a couple chapters at a time, and we gave e we gave ourselves two weeks to get through these easy to read chapters. But the content is mm -hmm. so you have to sit with it for a, a little bit. And so anyway, that's how that's how we we uh, we well, took I'll in. Get, Atlas I'll get back into it. I'll let <laughs> you All right. Know. So I had mentioned earlier that you you. You have Nexus. I mean, you're a partner in that mm -hmm. company, but you have some other ventures, and I would kind of like to hear what do you, what's on the horizon. Oh man, you know, I'm not going to tell her age, but I do think it's important. Like, she, I'm just going to say she's not not yet 45. So, I'm, <laughs> oh, I, great. No, a few months from it. <laughs> okay, well then you just said it. I well, you said not quite. <laughs> well, it's not next week. I am younger than that. <laughs> but I, I do think that that's I I I. I I just think that that's incredible what you've been able to achieve, and and you're you're still at that point. I appreciate you saying that because I see that as oh my gosh, um, I have a lot to do, and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I mean, and and I this is this is, you're talking to the same person that literally sat and cried with a bottle of wine at age 30, because all the things that I said I was going to have done and achieved by the time I'm 30, and I looked at it, but then I had to sit with it. Mm -hmm. Because none of those goals and the thoughts that I've got, that was my plan. You know, mm -hmm. that was early on plan. But then I look and I was like, I have four kids yes. at 30 and, st and, and and had finished school and started a career. So right. I needed to give myself grace and be proud of that in the moment. And yes. So 30 on, you know, was a lot of hustle um, in my 40s. Obviously, now I'm in a position where I can be more creative Um and the Nexus has allowed me to do that, to not have the operations anymore. And we have a fantastic team that takes care of all that. So the day-to-day, -day, you know, it has allowed me to venture into other things. Such so, as? Well, I have I have a lot of... Well, you don't have to go through I'm all of them, but I, no, am the, no, I love so, the software. Uh, it, we're venturing on um, software. And, um, but, you know, I also love real estate. We've talked about that. Okay. We've talked about that a, a little bit. I love real estate. Um I could sit for my license at any point. I took the classes to do that. Oh, okay. I have a year to sit, but probably won't. Okay. Um, not really that 
that interested, but I do like to to buy investment properties. Okay. Um, and and man, like I have told you before, I could write a book of what not to do. We've done it. I mean, relative what, relative to real estate. Relative to real estate. Okay. So I mean, that is another venture that I'll always always be interested in. Um, sure. Always want to dabble in. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, get smarter in. Right, and know? it's it's on the commercial side and the residential both, side. Both. Both. Yeah. Mm -hmm, both. So, um, so I mean, that's just one thing that inspires me that I have a passion for. Um, but really any business venture from its, from a conception right. is what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So what you ask, what's next? Um, I think at this phase in life, it's a, it's a, I look at it differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look to see what kind of, um, purpose, um, impact I could have on, my community mm -hmm. or on society as a whole if I want to dream sure. big. Whereas before it was pay the bills. Sure. You're, you're hustling to pay bills. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't have a you know, remarkable journey up to that point, but I am blessed to now sit at a seat to say, what next will be something that I want to have, per not that anything wasn't purpose driven, but no, sure. you know, to have the passion to impact something. Yeah, you want to make a difference. What do, what do my like to identify my skill sets to mm -hmm. say, how does this, what can I do to impact society? Sure. Um, and is, if that is in the healthcare industry, which is what I know, mm -hmm. what's the latest technology? Sure. What do we need to do? Um, you know, well, maybe we can talk about my new VR venture. And because, you know, I let everybody know a couple of uh, episodes ago that I'm interested in, in doing pivoting as well. Mm -hmm. I'll always have my roots in, you know, fresh right. produce because that's what brought me to the party. But also I'm interested in, in, in figuring out how we can use technology at, in the cross section of, of medical care as it relates to end of life, Alzheimer's and dementia and palliative care. So we're, we're going to be looking at doing a venture relative to virtual reality. And just in our short conversations, I know that you can bring a lot to well, when you had mentioned that on the podcast, <laughs> yeah. I thought, I think I even texted you and I said, speaking mind language now, <laughs> now. because I was like, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. You know, it, and so, yeah, that kind of stuff um, is what ignites me at this point. Like, what else can we do? I think early on, I didn't have the confidence to think that I could. Sure. You know, when you're, you're you've got kids and you've got to pay bills, like you do what it takes and you don't necessarily take the risk mm -hmm. of pivoting into such a something that dynamic but i think now i'm all game let's yes, do it let's do it yeah i think that's fantastic well michelle thank you is is there any final words you want to say as we head on to you know my favorite part of the podcast Ooh, music. <laughs> i mean no profound um final words i i really do appreciate you having me on though oh, well we I we mean, we're our listeners are going to really enjoy this episode and i think your story is remarkable and just kudos to you and and how you've decided to really be conscientious, especially as you were going along, and you you didn't you didn't give up, and you you decided that you know what this is my path is my path, and I'm going to do the best possible anything. I was going to do the best possible things that I can do to make the most of of my journey, and that. The fact that I could pick up on that and you weren't, I was just asking basic questions and you weren't trying to impress me. We were just right. having a very open I dialogue. Mean, I just was, I was blown away by your story. And I would, I mean, maybe my final words would be for somebody who feels like maybe their path isn't going the way they want it. Don't look so far ahead. Oh, I like that. You know, maybe don't look so far ahead. And and, and this is coming from an eight that, you know. <laughs> but sometimes you get too obsessed with looking too far ahead where you don't recognize the opportunities that may be right in front of you. And if you don't stop and settle into those, you might be missing something. Yeah, I love on that. that. You know, so, I mean, if, if 
if I could say anything, maybe that's it. Well, I love that. That was, that was beautiful and profound, to use your word. All right. <laughs> let's move on that. to music moments. So on this airplane ride, <laughs> I know you're like, gosh, was the seven-hour airplane I, ride? I don't know. We, were, we had wine. There was wine involved. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Who is this woman? <laughs> yeah. Why it, does she keep talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's bored. Yeah, she's bored and trying not to think about the fact that she's, you know, packing her bags. And no, I was enamored, and I was thinking – why does she keep, like, wow, this woman. I was just blown away. Like, with the, when you were talking, I, I just have to say, I was blown away. I was thinking, I am, I, I'm just soaking in everything you have to say. Here's a brilliant <laughs> businesswoman. I can learn from her. And, you know, at every step of the way, I'm, I would always Well, thank like you. I listen. think that, I appreciate that. But what was fun about the conversation is when it took a turn because – I said, well, what's bringing you to New York? Because I had told her why I was going to New York. And I go, well, what's bringing you? She's like, oh, I'm meeting my friends and going to a music festival. And then she mentions the music festival. And immediately I about lost my mind because mm-hmm. I was like, Brandy Carlisle. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so then, then we went and you knew Brandy Carlisle yes, as an artist. Yes, and uh-huh. and then immediately, I'm sure our listeners know what came after that is, have you read Broken Horses? And you've ended up listening to, you, yeah, I mean, I did. I listened as, to Broken Horses. As soon Horses. as you asked me that, I mean, I think I downloaded it as soon as I got off the plane <laughs> and then I finished it like in a day or two. You're like, wow, that was fast. But yeah. no, oh my gosh. Amazing. I love that recommendation. So uh, we yes. all obviously had a, a music connection right away, and she was, and you got to see a, so many amazing uh, artists. Stevie Nicks. Oh uh, yeah. She's, Hello. Oh, yeah. yeah. Icon. Yeah. So before I ask you about your favorite music, one of the other funny moments that we have is that you were listening to one of our podcasts, and so I get another text from you, and you're like, "I don't. I, I hate to say this, but I just, I, I cannot get into Adele." And I mean, I was like, I may be the only person you- <laughs> on earth. And oh my gosh, I want my ears. And that's why I'm like, tell me what's wrong with my ears. Because I know she's super talented and has this bold, massive voice and vocals. Yes. And, but every time, and I try, and I'm like, ah, I switch it. I turn it off. And yes. here you are, all about Adele. And I'm like, our friendship is going to be over now. Like, I have to tell no, her. No, I gave you some grace. I, but I did try to I did try to convert you. I sent a few specific songs, and you're like, still, my ears the are hurting. The lyrics, amazing. I mean, I love the lyrics of what she sings. Maybe, I don't know. I don't so know. what music shaped you? What what music or what what music do you just find yourself? <laughs> I, it's just funny because if you're an athlete, anybody uh, yeah. is listening to this right now, they're <laughs> like, "Oh, please, Michelle, do not say '90s rap, hip hop. Please do not say that." Oh gosh, Meg, if Meg was here, y'all would be up doing a dance routine. I'm no doubt. <laughs> I mean, there's I can't say that uh, music necessarily shaped me. It, 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 was it a pivotal part of? No, and and I you know I, music is. Is inspirational, no doubt. Sure. But I think maybe I, being emotionally not savvy at the time, maybe went to music as, here's something that um, I'm feeling right now. Let me just listen to that, and then I don't have to sit with those emotions and feelings. Oh, let the music do. So, the, let the music do the work. Yes. And so I like to, that's that's to honest. me that's how. If you ask how it shaped me, I don't know that that's a healthy answer, but that's where it would be. Let me just listen to the song so I don't have to deal with this myself. Okay. Well, that's fair. And, but I, obviously kind of deep, way deeper than we wanted to go right no, now. No, no, I like that. And I, I think too, I'm, I'm guessing that music played a, a, a big part of your, I mean, you worked, you lived in a gym. Oh yeah. Yeah. For, you know, but I, did you use music? No, I usually get in a zone when I'm, you know, just oh, interesting. Okay. It, it, it's in the background okay. at all times. Absolutely. All right. In the background at all times. So, but I never was conscious about it like I was it was there but I you know sure it it wasn't moving me or motivating me in my workouts or anything that I was doing I it was just there okay my mind is usually way past something else so (laughs) I don't there's no telling but music is important absolutely No, music, absolutely. Well, it better be because I, I send you. Our friend Chip is over now. No, it is absolutely important. You know that. I've sent you no, several yeah. oh, gosh, songs yeah. that have um, spoke to me. And, you know, that it, there's just, I don't know that there's one um, genre of music. You like, yeah, multiples. Yeah, for sure. It depends on the mood of the day. It does. It does. Well, I loved that That not only did we, we immediately were able to bond over Brandy Carlisle. And then, then you were able to read or listen. You listened to the book. I did. Which, I which listened is to the book. I had a lot changing. of flight time, and so I listened to the book. Yes, good. Mm-hmm. 
Well, Michelle, I think that's a wrap. So really appreciate you coming into our New York studio and uh, your story is incredible. And I, I, I appreciate you sharing and the vulnerability and just wish you the best in your journey forward. I have no doubt that whatever is next, and I know Nexus is part of that journey, and, and I know yes. that you have your eyes on different real estate things and looking for other ways that you can make a difference, and I have no doubt that you will do that. So thank you again for joining us. And to our listeners, I want to say, please, we will put some, we'll put some notes in the show notes for you and we appreciate you and thank wish you, you yeah, thank, thank you. you had a great time absolutely and listeners have a great rest of your week and we wish you forward what does meg say with grateful hearts grateful grateful hearts i love that though <laughs> no. i love it meg's like you did not get that right anyway we'll, we'll look forward to having meg back to keep me in line next week so <laughs> everyone have a great week goodbye goodbye as always you can connect with us on instagram and facebook at self smarter podcasts you can also leave a rating or review if you enjoyed what you heard today. Not only does this mean so much to us, but it also helps other leaders and future leaders find our community. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in becoming self smarter. This podcast is produced by Snacks Media and music is from a free platform. Well, that is until Brandy Carlisle reaches out to us to write the original score for our podcast. Friends, have a great rest of your day.